Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman, and over there we have Christopher Drives. Hey, everybody. How you doing? How you doing? Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. They will outfit you with all your hockey needs. They're everything from player gear to fan gear, any kind of jersey from the Midwest area you're looking for, and referee equipment except for an icing chart test for you to fail. And they can't get you a better coach or a GM. Let's not get into that just yet. Uh, hey, we're, 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 you set me up. All right, come on, let's go. All right. Oh, yeah, I guess it's my part. Yeah. All, right, shot, all right, shots on goal are uh, 30-23 in favor of the Red Wings. Uh, Detroit had 59% of the face-offs. Uh, Predators only had 42%. Both teams were 0 for on the power play. Detroit was 0 for 4. Nashville was 0 for 2. Penalty minutes, uh, 8 for the Predators, 4 for the Red Wings. Uh, hits were 19-13 in favor of the Predators. Block shots, 14-12 in favor of the Predators. And like usual, giveaways killed the Predators, 11-5. Uh, in the first period, Nashville got outshot nine to six. Uh, second period, they got outshot fifteen to four. How are you going to have ten shots after two periods? And then finally, in the third period, Nashville woke up and they outshot Detroit thirteen to six. All right, Dan, go. Before I get into that, um, the statistics of today's game, and I'm going to say this: you cannot show up in the third period every game and expect to win it just doesn't work you have to play a full 60 you can play 40 and possibly squeak out a win you can hell you can play 45 but you can't just play 20 and expect the victory exactly it it, 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 (laughs) here's the thing detroit was ready this time for nashville and we made zero changes in our lineup, zero changes to, uh, uh, anywhere throughout the game. And then uh, when the team lets Pekka down, you yank him for Soros, and they do the same to him. So you can't blame the goalies on this one. I got a feeling uh, Nashville's going to get destroyed by Dallas. I already see that covered. But... Yeah, Monday's going to suck, but yeah, let's all continue, Dan. All right, so scoring his fourth goal of the year was Robbie Fabree at the 4.59 mark of the first with an assist from Valtteri Filfola, the old man on the squad, uh, with an assist from Rodick, his eighth. And Filfola, that was his first. Uh, then Adam Ernie, hey, Ernie, where's Bert? Um, is Bertuzzi still in the lineup? I don't know. No, negative. Yeah, I don't even know if Bertuzzi still plays there, but they used to have uh, a guy named Ernie, uh, someone named Christian N, and uh, Bertuzzi all on the same line, and they called it the Bert and Ernie line. Ah, okay. Anyway, Adam Ernie scored his first goal of the year with an assist from Adam Glendening, uh, and that was at the uh, 12-24 mark. Glenn Denning, Admiral Fane, should remember him from his time in Grand Rapids. Uh, speaking of Glenn Denning, Glenn Denning scored his first with an assist from Fabry, his first, and Stetcher, his fourth. And that was at the 1722 mark of the second. In the third period, of course, Nashville showed up. Yep. Um, uh, Phil Forsberg scored his seventh um, at the 757 mark with an assist from Duchesne, his fifth, and Fabro, his third. Um, and then at the 1456 mark, uh, Anthony Mantha scored his fifth with an assist from Glenn Denning, his second, and Ronick his ninth. And then Rocco Grimaldi scored his third at the 1913 mark with an assist from Fabro, his fourth, and Ellis, his fifth. Um, crap list. Well, I'm going to start off with COVID. All right, now attack the team. The whole team. Okay. With the exception of two guys. 
And oh. these were the guys that kept working. And I'm, I mean the whole game. Oh, Pekka and who? Ellie Tolvanen and Trenton were the only two that came out there. And I know that sounds like an Admirals fan being biased, but I'm not because, trust me, yeah. half this roster is former Admirals. Yeah, but Pekka came out to play, too. He just uh, can't I haven't gotten that far yet. Oh, okay. Well, well, you said the only two guys that came to play. That's factually incorrect. Pekka came to play. Saros did as well, but the, you can't do anything when they don't play in front of you. You have to play for each other. Or don't play at all. Go home. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So in that for Detroit is, um, well, Jonathan Bernier, uh, 21 of 23. Um, he had no power. We, we had a power play, had no shots on him, no shorthanded shots. Uh, 0.913 on the save percentage. Um, Pecorine stopped 24 or 20 or 21 to 24, uh, 17 to 20 on even strength. And UC Saros stopped four or five on even strength, one on one, uh, on the power play. So they did sh- fix a little of the penalty kill, but then they, you know, crapped the bed there a little bit with even strength goals. Um, Forsberg, minus two. Kunin, minus one. Yarncroc, minus one. Arvidsson, minus one. Granlin, minus one. Duchesne, minus one. Ellis, minus two. Benning, minus one. Yossi, minus two. Um, Fabra would have been minus two, but he had two assists. Ellis would have been minus three, but he had an assist. <sighs> Um, your referees in the game were Trevor Hansen and Jake Brink. Uh, linesmen were Kyle Flemington and Yanni Murray. Head coach for Detroit is Jeff Blashill. For now, from what I'm hearing, head coach for Nashville, John Hines. Scratches tonight were for only Detroit, Darren Helm and Danny DeKaiser. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna get a little into that that John Hines comment. According to a writer for the color COL Hockey, which is the Colorado Avalanche Hockey, um, he does something similar to what we do. Also, um, uh, he also does a show on 104.3 The Fan in Chicago, and he tweeted out that he had been hearing rumblings that he is on the hot seat to turn this team around now. If they do not pull out a win against Dallas in the next series, I could pretty much consider this season a loss. At this point in the standings, okay, Nashville has played 15 games, which... Is right up there with Detroit, Chicago, Columbus, and that's it. Everybody else has games in hand. Dallas has three, Carolina has three, Florida has three, and Tampa Bay has two. Um, Nashville has one in hand against Columbus, Chicago, and Detroit, be it that they've only played 15, and those three teams have played 16. Um, Currently... They are sitting at a nine or a six and nine record, no overtime losses. At this point, me and Chris can't beat this issue enough. If you're going to lose, lose in overtime. At least you get a point and it stings half as bad. Yeah. From a fan perspective and from a player perspective, because at the end of the season, those points that you may have lost are are there. Now, the only problem with that this year is you're giving points to every team in your division. There is right now a five-way tie for second place between Florida, Carolina, Columbus, and Chicago at 18 points. Um, I think at this point, the way everyone is acting with Nashville, look, 
I don't want to be the one to come out and say it, but I do think it's time for a slight rebuild. You keep your core. You trade away some of the pieces that you would have may have had to put out there for free during the expansion. Let that be someone else's problem. And you keep your core together that you can protect. And you move forward beyond the expansion. If you're going to count this season as a loss, you have to be already one step ahead and move beyond the expansion. Look at what Ottawa just did with the trading of three players for one guy in Dezingle. They traded away three prominent and possible NHL players just to open up some space so they had room to cover who they needed to cover. It's just one of those things. If you're knowing that you're not going to make the playoffs this year, you might want to think about possibly protecting yourself beyond the expansion. Because if you have to give up a guy like Johansson for free, it's not going to sit well with the fans. Look at what wow. happened with James Neal. We gave him away for free and we traded away a couple guys. And how'd that turn out for Nashville? Yeah, we won the president's trophy, but that's a curse, not yeah. a gift. Yeah, you're the best team in the regular season, but that means you're only good in the regular season. That doesn't mean you won the Stanley Cup. And at the end of the day, that is the goal. Yeah, especially for a team like Nashville that's uh, never won the Cup before. That would be a huge accomplishment. Yes, and, and, and I'm saying this as a longtime fan. 1999, I watched my first Preds game and fell in love with the team. You know, it's just one of those things where if you don't fix this, you're going to end up in a situation where Dallas or Ottawa or Buffalo, where Buffalo hey, just... Hey, 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 hey. I'm not taking shots at Buffalo. Trust me, I'm a, I'm still I no, still no, no, like no, no, Buffalo. No, no. Bite your tongue. That's an insult saying that Buffalo might make it to the playoffs before the Preds again. <laughs> I'm I'm saying you may end up in a rebuild situation like them. And that's sad that you're putting uh, Nashville in the same category as Ottawa. Ottawa, I, I, I don't even want to talk about Ottawa. They got too many issues. Um, and here's the thing. When it all comes down to this, the if it's if it is poor coaching, that falls on the GM for hiring the coach. At the end of the day, if if this all comes back on the coaching and on the GM's uh, signings, that this just this group just can't click. It it can't. There's too many combative styles of playing the game that wow. it, it it won't work. I got, a, the, I got a gut feeling there might be a coaching change tomorrow. It might not be who we think, but it might be the beginning. It, I have it, a feeling one of the assistants might get axed tomorrow, and eventually that'll cause a snowball effect that'll eventually take out Hine. Well, and I think I think it's this too. Lambert's been in control of our power play for the last two years. Our power play has he was brought in to fix the issues we had with it, and it is now worse than it was beforehand. Yeah, that's pretty sad. It was wor this year is way worse on the power play than they were last year. And last year was crap. And last year was worse than the year before. So, yeah, there might be a coaching change tomorrow, in which time I'd probably have to do a video to announce it. We'll be Stay here. tuned, folks. Stay tuned. Um, but, you know, we're, 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 we're really kind of confused because on paper, this team should be beating teams like even Tampa Bay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They should be competitive against Tampa Bay. No, I'm saying on paper they could beat them without Kucherov in their lineup. They could. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. They should be at least. They should be at least competitive. And this, I I'll, I'll give them credit. They should be competitive with Tampa Bay without Kucherov in the lineup. Here's the with thing. Kucherov, you don't stand a chance because Nikita here's Kucherov is really, really good. Here's the thing. And I'm and, and I, I think me and Chris could uh, I'm gonna make Chris flash back here a little bit. Uh -oh. 
But I really don't want to have another spot where we get about a month or two into the season and then they start clicking and then we end up with a certain cardiac kid situation again. I like those because it makes the games interesting. And I'd like you getting all flabbergasted and flustered and hyperventilating. Yeah, I like watching you squirm a bit because then you sigh that breath of relief when they win. It's like, ah, you know? <laughs> It, 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 I, I've, if you want to know more about how we feel, check out our, our video on our thoughts so far, but this just adds to that. I'm just adding what my thoughts tonight were. And, and I, I think that at this point, the Preds need to make a decision. Are they going to compete or are you going to fold? Now, you don't have to make that decision now. You got another week or so before you have to make that decision. But yeah, make it before the trade deadline so that way maybe you can get some pieces moving forward. And 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 I'm gonna say this. I know, I know how hard it is to compete and play. All me and Chris are both former athletes in one respect or another. He played football, I played hockey, but we both know what it's like to get in the trenches and battle. And you know what? There's here's the thing: you if we showed up and played for the last 20 minutes of the game, we'd have been benched for the rest of the year yeah. off of the first game. And and here's another part. Fabro is not an NHL defenseman. No, nah, he's an AHL guy. He needed to develop in the AHL, which is what I said last year, and I said when he was coming into the league. He better come to Milwaukee because these defensemen, they need coaching, and they need to be ready. He did not they did not do that they rushed him and guess what happened it they is broke blowing him. up in their face horribly yeah they broke him and here's the thing if you keep doing this to him you're going to have to trade him before he becomes a major bust so that he can some way salvage his career and you don't get nothing out of it Milwaukee will take him next year he'd have to clear waivers he played the minimum now oh yeah, good job, Nashville. Good job, Poyle. You're making Dane go bald with all your frustrating stuff, Poyle. It's it's last year I was excited and things were starting to go right, and then COVID happened. So that I let slide a little bit. Yeah, you haven't been happy since before COVID. I'll just put it that way. You know. And you know you you weren't even happy during the playoffs. You were just waiting for them to hurry up and get done with so you can get back to being miserable instead of enjoying it like I do. Yeah, I didn't care. Exactly. Here's the thing: no completed season, no full season. There shouldn't be hockey. I'm sorry. It's just it takes away from the integrity of the Stanley Cup. It takes away from the integrity of the game. It takes integrity away from the standings and all the work that these players do put in. But Tampa Bay was clearly the better team, even in the regular season last year. Boston, no Tuka Rask. They would have given them a run for – with Tuka Rask, they would have given them a run for their money. I'm just saying. Yeah, okay. I suppose. You know, Boston's had a good team, and they still do. It's – you know, they lost a couple pieces, but they still do. I don't know. I don't believe in a team that has a player that goes around licking other players. Yeah, that's kind of tough. Yeah, but... yeah, it is. Anyways, I think that you got anything else to cover on this game? Because I'm pretty sure we nailed it all. Yeah, um, like I said, stay tuned. Also, keep an eye on our Facebook page. Go over there and give us a like and a follow. Subscribe over here on YouTube. Click that notification bell so you can get notified every time we upload a video. For Dan and Chris and our sponsor, Hockey Locker, you can thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for watching. Check out our Florida Everblades video later. Peace. Yeah.